It's easy to lose sleep when you're worried about your health insurance plan. But when you have a family counting on you to take care of them, having the right coverage is more important than ever. That's why Anthem Blue Cross and Blue Shield is here to help. With low to no cost plans for you and your family. So you never go it alone. That's our anthem. Click to learn more. What's up, y'all? This is Nina Perez, and this is Straight Talk, No Sugar Added. And as you know, we go around this amazing planet of ours, finding the best humans on it to come on here to grow, challenge, and transform your thinking. And I found this beautiful, beautiful, lovely woman. Her name is Kamini, and I hope I said that right. Kamini (laughs) Wood is a certified professional coach, and she helps people take the courageous steps into identify their limiting beliefs. Love that. We'll talk about that. The reasons for their stagnation or feeling of not enoughness, love that word, so that they can have what they want professionally and personally in their lives to have a fulfilled life. And I I love this kind of conversation, Kamini. Kamini? You got it. You're amazing. (laughs) (laughs) It's so important to me for you to feel respected and that I actually say it right. So Kamini, um, I really am glad you're here. I love having these kind of conversations that help us like move forward, right? Even if it's Mm -hmm. just the 1%, just move forward. But before we get into the nitty gritties of all of what you're going to drop here today, (laughs) let's learn a little bit about you, Kamini. Um, Tell us a little bit about who you are. So I actually grew up in Connecticut. I know you're in Connecticut. Um, I grew up in a small town in right outside of Hartford, Connecticut, a predominantly white town. Um, So I grew up in in a way where my daughter of immigrant parents, so my parents worked really, really hard. I, throughout my younger years, wanted to fit in and also didn't want to be a burden to my parents. So I spent a lot of my younger years kind of people pleasing and doing exactly what I was supposed to do, trying to be that good girl, worked really hard, um, ended up, you know, following the traditional path of getting into the business world. I actually worked um, in the dot-com industry when it was a big thing back in the the early 2000s, Um, was a project manager. helped individuals grow into the roles that they played. Cause as a project manager, one of the things you do is manage resources and resources mm. being people. Um, so I really helped them develop who they wanted to be within the roles that they were playing within that, that um, business atmosphere. I went on to actually run my husband's law practice for 15 years. And in that role, once again, found myself helping people develop themselves professionally. And it started to bleed into that personal development as well. At the same time, I was going through my own self-transformation. As I mentioned on the outset there, I developed a lot of people-pleasing tendencies and perfectionist Mm -hmm. tendencies growing up. So as I was in adulthood, a mother at the time, you know, became a mother times five, realized how some of those tendencies were starting to be uh, emulated in my own children and recognizing how it was starting to hold them back. I will often say very honestly to people that my children are my best teachers. Um, So through that process, went through my own self-transformation and learning how to recognize what was holding me back. So once I went through that process, as I had developed in a professional career and the professional capacity to really help people uh, grow and become who they wanted to be on that professional front and personal front, realized that that was really my calling to bring those two things together, to train specifically to help people understand themselves on that deeper level. And so now that's what I'm doing on a day-to-day basis. I work one-to-one with people, providing that safety for them to really, truly connect with themselves in order to liberate and be their authentic self so that they can move on to whatever they want professionally and personally. Oh, that's good. So let's go back a little bit. Like where Mm -hmm. did the people pleasing come from do you think was that is that was uh traditionally in uh you didn't i don't think you mentioned where your family's from uh where, yeah i have an indian you? background i have uh, an indian, indian background. okay mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. i do think that the people pleasing came um from a couple different things one as i mentioned being the odd man out comedy is a different name right so it's, it's not easy to pronounce um definitely stuck out um 
you know, I, I mentioned it was predominantly white town where I grew up. So part of the people pleasing was trying to make sure that I belonged. And so through that mm. process, making sure that other people were happy was a way for me to gain that feeling of belonging and enoughness and worthiness. Um, in addition, uh, being the daughter of immigrants who are, you know, concerned about providing for my sister and I, um, I didn't want to be a burden and I didn't want them to worry about me. So once again, mm -hmm. people pleasing came in into the, the fold there where it was all about how can I ensure that uh, they're okay and they're happy because they're already mm -hmm. working so hard. Yeah. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. Right. I think um, especially uh, when we're living in a place maybe where we don't um, see commonality. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so you, you really try to maybe mold yourself a little bit, maybe you mm -hmm. just fit in a little bit um, so that maybe you're not picked on or bullied or looked at differently. Right. Exactly. How many, and so, you're accepted. Right. Yeah, I think Renee yeah. Brown talks about it, the, the importance of belonging. Um, mm -hmm. and not just fitting in. And I think that's part of the, when you're younger, you don't know, really know that difference, right? And so right. You, you make these, you take on these narratives and behavior patterns because in that, at that point in time, I was trying to fit in. And really it's about ultimately the crux of it was wanting to belong and yeah. recognizing as an adult now with all of this work that I've done, that belonging really comes from within first. You belong to mm -hmm. yourself first. And mm -hmm. from there, you belong to those around you. It's not about fitting in and trying to be what somebody else wants you to be. Yeah. And, you know, it's such a good message that you're, you're talking about and something I, I wish that was said or, or expressed more, especially like on like social media channels and mm -hmm. things like that. Right. Because I think one of the things that's hurting our children today is trying to be so much like whatever they're watching on, on social yep. media. Right. Mm -hmm. um, which, which can be such a challenge because there's some good things on there. It's not all bad. Um, mm -hmm. You know, but there, there's just some things that I notice myself that I'm just like, wow, we just, we just really are not giving the best messages. You know, uh, a lot of people aren't. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I, I work with teens all the way through adults and I see this across the board. Our teens are mm -hmm. suffering from it, but then also even adults, um, mm -hmm. entrepreneurs, business owners who are on social media trying to promote their business. Oftentimes that pull of comparison yeah. is one yeah. that, that like holds them back. Right. And then yeah. that triggers the limiting beliefs that keep keep them from actually growing into who they want mm -hmm. to be in terms mm -hmm. of that business owner or growing their own business. And instead it becomes, how do I measure up to this person, um, you know, that I'm seeing on social media? Right. No, it's, it's, it's interesting. I literally just finished a live about 20 minutes ago, 30 minutes ago. And I was just talking about that too. Is like, you know, that, I mean, well, we all know that comparison is the thief of joy, right? But also the fact that you're comparing yourself to someone or something that you don't even know to be real. Right. Mm -hmm. So the mm -hmm. only one that you can actually really logically compare yourself to is you because you know what mm -hmm. you did yesterday that maybe yep. you shouldn't have done or could do better or mm -hmm. did great. And mm -hmm. so it only should be you you're comparing yourself to. Right, Kamini, because we we yeah. hurt ourselves when we're trying to compare. If I try to com compare myself to you and I don't even know your like your backstory or if right. what you're showing me is what it is or what mm -hmm. I, I you'll never find yourself, Kamini. So I want to know about Absolutely. your journey there. What made yeah. What happened there? Do you remember like the moment when you said, okay, I, I know that you said your kids taught you lessons, yeah. but I'm wondering what those aha moments were for you and, and how you, tr you started to make decisions to transform yourself. Well, you know, honestly, Nina, it still happens, right? So, cause this is a journey. So it'll, mm -hmm. it happens in different levels and different evolutions. So back when I recognized that my children were showing those people pleasing behaviors, that was like, catalyst number one, right. Mm -hmm. And recognizing I needed to go, I needed to go through my own transformation in order to show up differently. Um, so that was one way that I recognized that a shift needed to happen. But along the journey, uh, part of it for me is noticing when that pull of comparison was, was rearing its ugly head, so to speak, where it's like, oh, I'm comparing myself to this person over here. And as you said, we don't know what that story is. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't know where that person is on their journey or if if our journeys are even even similar in the slightest. Right. So for me personally, it was it really came to this place of that relationship with self and understanding what is it that I truly valued, what was meaningful to me, and what did I need? And those are my anchoring, those are my anchoring places to go, which is, is this meaningful to me? If the answer is yes, then I'll continue that. going down that path. If mm -hmm. it's not meaningful to me, then I get curious with it. 
it's not about mm-hmm. judgment. It's just getting curious and saying, okay, so what's this about? Where's this coming from? And a lot of times when we get curious, we can recognize that it's coming from some external place. Mm-hmm. Um, my oldest daughter is actually a professional ballerina. And one of the things that we routinely have talked about in the past and, and still comes up because again, we're, we're human. It's always about evolution and growing and continuing to expand. But you know, in that industry, it is so easy to get caught up in that comparison. And it is Mm -hmm. so important to recognize that it's all about the growth of where am I today compared to where I was before. Mm -hmm. And when we do that now, we can actually see that growth. You know, she can see how she's grown over the years in terms of her craft versus if she compares herself to the other dancers in her company, Mm -hmm. it can easily drag her down. And also their journey is nowhere near what her journey has been. Right. It's It's a very personal thing. I'm glad you're teaching them that too, because that'll set them up for the future for their life, right? Because um, they'll be able to realize and recognize their their greatness and who they are mm-hmm. as individuals and what they bring to the table, right? Um, because, uh, you know, I remember struggling with that as well, you know, being younger uh, and looking at everyone else. And mm-hmm. I was a young mom, I had my kid at 15 years old, right? So mm-hmm. I had a really... Um, you know, stigma uh, uh, about, you know, looking at, oh man, well, she's going to college and I can't because I got a kid at home and I'm 50, you know, like that kind of mm-hmm. stuff, you know? Mm-hmm. And I mm-hmm. realized, well, you know what, that, that story is actually my superpower, you know, like Absolutely. that's who I am. Right. And so mm-hmm. it must, uh, it, it's a, it's a beautiful thing when you, when you do the work on you, right. Mm-hmm. Comedy, but also when you see your kids doing the work too, that's really fun. Right. Because you must you must be able to especially you just let's just use the story you just used about your daughter. I mean, for her to recognize her growth and who she is and how much better she is today than maybe yesterday. You know, like how empowering is that? Right. Um, It's amazing to watch because what people sometimes don't recognize is when they put in that work on themselves. And they, mm-hmm. they put in that investment of time on themselves. It does come back in ways that you don't anticipate. So just giving her, my daughter as an example, she's very young. However, she was given a principal role in a ballet just this fall. Oh, wow. And it's because of the self-belief over, I mean, yes, she's an amazing dancer. She's very gifted and very talented. And I, and I'm saying that not just as mom, but as a fan. Yeah. <laughs> but, I love that. <laughs> but it is. It was her own self-worth and going within herself and only worrying about comparing herself to where she was, you know, last season to this season in order for that to continue to grow and evolve into who she wanted and needed to be for herself. It wasn't about the other dancers. So good. And I I know when I was reading your bio, you also help, um, you know, your, your clients with like uh, getting through like uh, past traumas or toxic toxic yeah. relationships and things, probably toxic relationships with themselves too, right? Because we have toxic relationships with others, but we definitely have mm-hmm. a toxic relationship where we can 100%. with ourselves, yes. right? Yes. So tell yes. me about that. Tell me how you got into the coaching aspect of this and, and being with other and cognitive behaviors and all that. And you yep. know how you're helping your clients, what is it that you're doing with them? So a lot of the work that I do is centered around uh, emotional awareness and then the inner critic. And you're absolutely 100% right that, yes, toxic relationship with with others, which we absolutely talk about because a lot of that has to do with boundaries and learning how to set boundaries. And as a recovering people pleaser, that's one of the things I really believe in and wholeheartedly work on with my clients is boundaries. But that, that toxic relationship with self is also really important. And that comes down to how are you talking to yourself? How are you seeing yourself? And how are you treating yourself? Mm -hmm. Which is all about learning self-compassion and recognizing that, you know, a lot of us, especially for a high achiever, or we've got lofty goals and we go after them and we strive and we strive and we strive. A lot of times we think that that inner critic is what makes us go further. And we actually shame ourselves thinking, oh, if I shame myself, then that's the Mm -hmm, thing that's mm going to make me continue mm -hmm. to work harder. And it's the opposite because every time we shame ourselves or we allow the inner critic to take hold, maybe in the very short term, we might see a little bump, but in the long term, and we're playing a long game, right? Life is a long game. It's not the short game eventually it starts to eat away at our self-esteem, our self-confidence and our own self-love, which actually 
will lead us down the path of not being able, will eventually plateau because yeah. shaming will hold you to this. This is all you're going to get versus when you can lean into self-kindness over judgment. You can lean into being aware of the present moment versus like living in the past or future tripping. So it's all about self-compassion. We can actually propel ourselves so much further. Mm-hmm. Talk to me a little bit. So those of uh, those who are listening and are really jiving with what you're saying, right? Because I know that as entrepreneurs and you know, leaders and stuff. This, this is a real thing, right? Like this crit, this critique, this criticizing us ourselves and all that. That's Hey there, my amazing community of straight talkers. I just wanted to give a quick announcement because I wanted to introduce you to a transformative life coaching program that I have made exclusively for women. I want them to break free from shame and embrace their true potential so that they can build that life and business that they have always wanted. Now, our transformational coaching will guide you. We will help you. We will uncover your passion, your goals, and will develop your roadmap to success. Visit me at ninaperez.com and you can join an amazing community of women that are on the same trajectory as you because I want you to create that life and business you deserve and transcend that shame and unwanted behaviors. So don't wait any longer. Visit ninaperez.com. Dot com and let's embark on this journey together. Now back to the show. That's real, especially when mm-hmm. you're trying to gain your clients, but you didn't get any, you know, you put out a great post, but nobody's commented like it happens mm-hmm. to all of us. Right. So yep. talk to me about the short game versus the long game. What do you mean when you said, you know, this is a long game, not a short game. Let, let's break that down. Yeah. So, you know, we have to ask ourselves, are we, um, are we setting up our business for the, you know, the only from here to like next week, or are we trying to actually build a business yes. for the long term and the long haul? And right. so, yeah, we may put out that post and there's there's no comment or there's no reaction, but guess what? We showed up and we put out that post and we don't even know who might be lurking in the background. A lot of times people are looking at our social media posts and they're not actually responding or doing yeah. anything with it. They're seeing it. They're recognizing who you are. They're hearing your message and they might show up, you know, several months from now. So it is about the long game. It's not just about, you know, this short term, do I get the quick fix? Do I get the quick win? It's about Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. recognizing that we're in this, you know, to build a business. And when we Mm -hmm. come to that place and we recognize, oh my gosh, my inner critic is the one who's telling me I haven't done enough or, you know, that wasn't good enough. It's, well, wait a minute. Did I show up? Did the post mean something to me? Did I have a message that I really felt called to put out there? great. Then you're aligned with yourself. You keep putting that out there because that's what this is all about. You're building a business that means something to you. And as long as you're aligned with yourself, you're taking those meaningful actions, committed actions for the long term. Yeah. I mean, just like this conversation right now is evergreen, right? Mm -hmm. It'll always be out there. And Mm -hmm. and that's a good thing, right? So I'm I'm thinking about uh, the coach that I'm working with now. I mean, I think I heard her message like eight months ago. You know, mm-hmm. like saying like eight mm-hmm. months ago, but it got stuck in my head, you know, mm-hmm. and um, and then I had her on the podcast. We had a phenomenal conversation and that got stuck in my head. And mm-hmm. it wasn't until I was ready, which was like maybe five months later, where I finally reached out and said, OK, I'm ready now. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like, I know mm-hmm. what I want to do and I know that you do this particular thing mm-hmm. very well. And mm-hmm. so um, just to bounce off of what you're saying, exactly. And that goes the same with our personal development, right? With our self-development. That's a life game. That's a yes. that's definitely yes. a long game. That's yes. for life. <laughs> yes, exactly. You know, I right. have conversations with people all the time and they're just like, you know, they want the quick fix and I always slow them down. I'm like, but what? what's the purpose for that? Are we just trying right. to do this for the next 60 days or is this right. for your your life? Right. You know, this is for the right. long haul. <laughs> right. I mean, it's because, you know, I remember my kids used to laugh at me because I'm I'm a, perf- a perfectionist, also a recovering people pleaser. And mm-hmm. uh, but I learned my boundaries. Well, let me tell you something. There is freedom in boundaries. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> Holy Absolutely. Crap. I was mad. Oh I didn't gosh, do this yes. a long time ago. Right. Yes. 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 <laughs> Oh my gosh. Yeah. So freeing. So mm-hmm. freeing. I remember when I first started saying no, how awful I felt inside. I'm like, that mm-hmm. feels yucky. I don't like it, you know? And then when I realized the freedom that came with not over, to, like over, um, what's that? Uh, promising myself. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's like, mm-hmm. wow. Now yes. I just say yeah. no, because it's fun. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> and you know what I always say too, like that, uh, that uncomfortability proves to us that we're, we're at our growth zone. Like we are yeah. on that edge. And once yeah. we keep going, we're, you know, so much so is possible good. on the other side of it. <laughs> so Absolutely. good. So yeah. good. So I know that you're currently working with, um, with clients and stuff and yep. you actually do a lot of great things with them. So I, I'd like to like kind of um, expand that a little bit. So I'd like to know, um, maybe like the process or like when, if somebody's really like listening to us right now and they're like, wow, I really like her, I like her energy, you know, what's that process look like? What, what kind of, I guess what I'm trying to say is who do you like to work with? What kind of, you know, what's your, what's your client model? What is that? Yeah. So I work with, um, I work with a lot of high achievers. So, you know, entrepreneurs, executives across the board. So it's, it's, it's a lot of professionals who are really working, yeah. on, working yeah. hard to, to get to that next level. And really the work that I help them with is recognizing where they might be holding themselves back. Because oftentimes, especially if we're in the entrepreneurial world, we are always on the go, 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 go. Yeah, and yeah. many times we're on autopilot. So allowing for that space to recognize where we might be on autopilot and it's no longer serving us. Also recognizing what might be those limiting beliefs or that inner critic that is holding you back and to the next level of that business or with the professionals I work with, what's the ne- what's holding you back to the next level of the career that you're on. Yeah. Um, so that's really who I love to work with because ultimately um, those individuals have so much potential. It's just recognizing where these old stories and old narratives might be holding them back. That's good. So, so you, uh, you work with both men and women. It doesn't have to be mm-hmm. just women. Or oh, that's good. Yeah, that's yeah. good. So when you, um, so if somebody's listening right now and wants to know, um, you know, kind of the, the specific, oh, I, I, I see what you're saying about the journey, you know, about where they're getting stuck. And I'm, I bet you that my audience just peaked up a little bit because <laughs> I don't care who you are. We all get stuck in something. We really, really do. Mm-hmm. Um, so what would you think would be kind of like, the first steps for people to recognize that maybe that they are stuck or that they're not at their, not going towards their full potentials. There's, there's like, are there red flags or anything like that, that people should be looking out for? You know, it's, that's a great question. I think it's different for different people, but oftentimes when we catch ourselves, um, feeling either, well, a couple things. One, if we're emotionally drained, a lot of the time where we just kind of feel exhausted and not really sure that could be an indicator that there's some stagnation or some burnout kind of learning lurking in the background. Um, but other things though, are when we catch ourselves, uh, stuck in the, I shoulds, I should be doing this mm-hmm. or I should be doing mm-hmm. that. That's a really good indicator that's that good something one. is coming up where we're feeling like there's something else there, but we're not quite sure what it is. Mm-hmm. Um, and then of course, the other one is recognizing how you're talking to yourself because many times that inner critic is going to be a big indicator as to where you might be holding yourself back. That's good. That's good. And, and uh, so what you're saying is be aware of language, be aware of your language, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's good. Because, you know, we, we tend to do that. We tend to not recognize that limitation that we are constantly selling ourselves and we don't even realize that it's there right I, I love the way you said it's the the feeling of not enoughness enoughness is that what you said yeah enough I do I yeah. love that my, my little word <laughs> yeah. I love it I love it because it's true I think I, I know actually I work with I work with only women I don't work with with a uh, male but I work with women and I realize that there is a lot of that a lot mm-hmm. of that mm-hmm. second guessing yourself even though you're a pro at what you do you know, mm-hmm. and I, yeah, it, that, it's self doubt, yeah. right? And, yeah. and a lot of times, I find that that's the one. The I talk about imposter syndrome a lot, and mm-hmm. usually, it's the false belief of I'm not enough, and that's a big one that lurks in the background. I'm not enough. I'm not good enough, or I'm not worthy. Those are the mm-hmm. biggest ones that, mm-hmm. that we come across. Yeah. What do you do personally yourself when you are going through something of not enoughness? Because I, I I know Kamini that we go through this in our whole life, right? Yeah. We're going to go through the imposter syndrome. Uh, we're going to, we're just, we just are, I think that's just a human nature thing, right? That your brain tries to do to protect you and, and will, you know, be there to kind of um, cause, uh, cause uh, like a limiting uh, uh, wall, if you will, for you, because it's trying to protect you. It's trying not to let you go to that scary place of something new, something you don't know yet. So what what do you do personally yourself, like when you realize that you're in that, when you're going through that or you're in that place? 
Oh, that's a great question. Um, for me personally, and I'm sorry that I'm coughing in your ear that's as okay. well. Um, you know, for me, it's about slowing down and separating myself from the thought, right? Oh, Cause good. the thought mm -hmm. is just a thought. So mm -hmm. it's about recognizing that I'm having the thought that whatever it may be and naming it. Cause what happens is, is we do, we, we fuse to that not enoughness thought. So if we can allow for some separateness between ourselves and the thought, then we can come back to, you know, what's meaningful to me and what is the committed action I'm going to take that's aligned with my personal value system. That's good. It's the pausing, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. We don't do enough of that. I don't think, <clears throat> you know, <laughs> It's a go, go, go situation, especially, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, you know, this coming, uh, coming, 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 such a beautiful name. I got to get it. Okay. Um, so, you know, this because as an entrepreneur and, you know, working even with your husband, right? Because he was an entrepreneur mm -hmm. and you were working in his, that, that you, you hit these walls where you're just, you're working nonstop. And I think one of the <clears> things <throat> you probably are even seeing is a lot of burnout, mm. right? A lot of people yes. feeling that real serious burnout. And that's a real thing. I don't care. That's a real thing. Um, what do you say to people who are listening right now and they're feeling overwhelmed or not enoughness or this burnout feeling? What would you think would be like the first step for them to start to recover? Well, the very first thing is to um, self-care is so important, right? So getting back into the present moment versus thinking about the past and ruminating on the past or worrying mm. about the future. So it's about the here and now. That's the very first thing. I love that. And then it's about recognizing that they're, you know, again, separating yourself from some of the thoughts. So as entrepreneurs, a lot of times the thought becomes, if I work harder, I got to work harder. I got to do more. And sometimes we have to slow down to actually go faster. Yes. And what I mean by that is slow it down, get in the present moment. What do I need right now? What's meaningful to me? What are the one or two committed actions I'm going to take in alignment with that? And then work our way through that versus trying to do all the things all at once super fast because what ends up happening is we and we we spin out or we burn out and then we're completely we can't move forward after that because we're just exhausted right and then you can't move i mean you really can't move forward at all and you know what's funny is i was you know, i was just talking to you about how i was doing my live and that's what it was about it was called um aiming low to gain much Mm. And it was about, you know, just uh, almost the same thing, the concept of, you know, doing things you don't really want to do the small little things that may seem unimportant, because you're looking at the big goal, and that's all you want. And you don't realize that there's these <clears throat> little steps that yeah. actually help you get there healthy, you get mm -hmm. there mm -hmm. the healthy way, you know, mm -hmm. so you're saying the same thing It's like, take those small, you know, take those moments, the present time, be present, think of your feelings, know who you are, actually be here, be here. Yeah. Right. Yes. Because yes. we are always there over there. Yes. Doing that. <laughs> we are, we're either living in the then or the there. Right. Yeah. The, the past or the future. Yep. And it really is about process over outcome. You know, sometimes we get so attached to the outcome and it's about yeah. what if I'm present for the process? Because mm -hmm. then I get there and it's the outcome that was meant to happen versus this thing that I really attached to. And I don't know if that's exactly what I wanted it to be. Yeah, that's amazing. That's awesome. This was such a good conversation. Thank you for dropping all this knowledge too, because I think, you know, I speak to a lot of my, um, my listeners, which is great. I have a, I have an active community and that's mm -hmm. one of the things that they're always commenting on or saying, it's like, Oh, I needed this today. And this was mm -hmm. awesome. And I, you know, I've been struggling with this. So I, I really do feel like this conversation is going to hit a lot of points. So before I let you go though, I know that like I said, I have an active community. So if they want to work with you and they want to really like dig in deep for, with moving forward, how do we do that? How do we get in contact with you? How do we, how do we connect? Yeah. Uh, I'm on the web at comedywood.com and they can read more about me. There's a lot of blog posts as well. That might, that might be helpful to your listeners. Um, and then I'm also on Facebook and Instagram and Pinterest all with the handle. It's authentic me. Oh, I like that. It's authentic me. Check that mm -hmm. out, guys. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you so much for hanging out with me. Uh, I'm, I love your name, Comedy. I just <laughs> wish I would have gotten it right. Oh, you know, I tried to get it right as much as possible. Because you did amazing. A beautiful, unique <laughs> way to, you know, to pronounce your name. And I just love it. So thank you for spending time with me and sharing this space and really just pouring into my audience. I appreciate you.
Thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Guys, thank you so much for hanging out with us. I knew that you would fall in love with her, right? Great energy, isn't that? Oh, I just love people like her. All right. So she's amazing. I'm going to make sure to link all of her information below because I want you to be authentically you and she wants to get that with you as well. So make sure that you guys connect with her, show her some love, work with her if she really resonated with the message of, of what you're going through. And, and you know, I'll be honest with you. I always say everyone needs a coach, a mentor, somebody to help them through because we don't always see our blind spots. And it's important to have people that will come alongside you because they really care. I mean, they, I mean, honestly, she, I, I went on her website. She has all the certifications. Why is that important? She took the time. She said, you know, I'm going to take the time to learn all this stuff so I can really help people. So make sure that you guys connect with her. Okay. I love you guys so much. Thank you for everything that you do. This is Nina Perez, straight talk, no sugar added until next time. It's easy to lose sleep when you're worried about your health insurance plan. But when you have a family counting on you to take care of them, having the right coverage is more important than ever. That's why Anthem Blue Cross and Blue Shield is here to help. With low to no cost plans for you and your family. So you never go it alone. That's our Anthem. Click to learn more.